Hey guys, Fairly Oak here with uh, the final video from information from BlizzCon 2011. This was the WoW Open Q&A panel. Now, there were a lot of questions asked and of course a lot of answers. I'm just going to go through some of the ones that seemed pretty interesting, at least to me. Hopefully they are to you as well. Um, but if you want a full list of everything that was said, I would suggest going to WoW Insider. So that's wow.joystick with a Q dot com. And uh, there is a live blog panel about it on, on that website. So let's start off. Pandaren, you choose Alliance or Horde. How is there a way to distinguish between Alliance and Horde, Pandaren, and BGs? Your UI will have to tell you. In Arena, you can fight members of your own faction, so we have to rely on that red name. There might be ways to distinguish enemy Pandaren, but we don't plan to make them look different. Crafting. For jewel crafting, end game feels bland. Any possibilities you could add stuff equivalent to raindrops? Always possible. Question is, when it's appropriate. Not for every single tier, and whether forcing people to switch professions uh, is what would result. Could we make them BOE to avoid that? Even if it's BOE, a jewel crafter would expect gold from that, so it's still giving something to one profession that others don't get. Gameplay lore question. In 4.3, we get to kill Murazond in a 5-man, but Deathwing and Melingos require 10 and 25-man. Is this the last we'll see of the infinite? I want to kill them in a raid. And player housing? For housing, standard answer. It's something we'd love to do someday, and we have a general idea of ways we'd do it. But there is time and there's uh, but there is time and resource consuming. Oh no, but they are time and resource consuming. My goodness. Um, as long as you guys want new races and classes and dungeons, it's tough. But we're still thinking about it. Uh, relative to the infinite dragonflight question, the component is wrapped cleanly in end time. But the infinite concept is very cool and very useful for the world. Shaman's new talents. A lot of them seem to be geared at resto. Or to resto and not DPS. I know you want hybridization, but what about DPS? There are definitely DPS options there. There will uh, definitely be ways. We just don't want to do it to the point of giving everyone another cookie cutter build. Will uh, enchanters be able to make epic ones? Definitely. Whoever came up with the name for Mage Tier 13, I love you, Arcane Mages. Do you plan on altering or adding spells that gives us a dot? As a matter of fact, with the 5.0 talent revamp, Living Bomb will be going to all mages. Will you ever make BOE, uh, BOA items go across servers? Maybe someday in the future, probably not in the immediate future. We don't yet have a me uh, mechanism to do that. The databases don't do the best job talking to each other. Healers design in Mists of Pandaria. Bring more healers to a 25-man raid? New healing class to be introduced, so increased pressure on the existing healers to justify their slots? I don't think we'll change the number of healers we expect raids to bring. You know, some will mix it up, and some won't. Uh, thank you for the real ID dungeon thing. It's awesome. Do you have plans to implement spectator mode for raids or BGs? The audience liked that question, and the answer is, that would be sweet. We have wanted that for a long time, spectators and replay modes. Question of getting around to it but hopefully someday. As a 10-man raider, there's a lot of disparity between the 25 and 10-man raiders. They feel almost laughably easier. However, a lot of 10-man raiders are still hardcore, going to raise difficulty. Interesting, the Korean guilds consider 10-mans to be hard modes. It's the opposing way in the West. Hard to balance because you can't count on every raid buff in 10-man. 10 versus 25-man, maybe 15 raids is a better model? Asking your guild to add or remove people is difficult. No matter what raid size is, there will always be problems. So that's it for the questions and answers that I thought were really interesting and pretty relevant. There were some more questions that, personally to me, I'm not super interested in, as they said they want Mists of Pandaria to be more of a humor expansion than a dark and super serious expansion. They want it to be a lot more enjoyable. But there are some good lore questions out there if you want to check them out. Uh, MMO Champion or WoW Insider. There's, there's a lot of other sites as well that you can find this. Or just Google it. And you'll find quite a bit. Anyway, guys. Uh, that's it for the BlizzCon 2011 information that came, well, from BlizzCon. Thanks to, in part by, WoWJoystick.com. Or that is WoW.Joystick.com, which is WoW Insider. I've been going off of their live blogs. Thank you, guys. You guys are very awesome. To those of you who actually got to go to BlizzCon, very, very awesome. I'm glad you guys got to go, and I hope you really enjoyed it. It seemed like it was a very enjoyable experience from what I've heard about it. 
and uh, enjoy your goodie bags. So like I said, that's it for the BlizzCon 2011 information. I do want to let you know that look forward to beta gameplay of Mists of Pandaria the day it comes out, as I have subscribed for the 12-month uh, game time, meaning I will be in the beta. So if you don't like to lock yourself into a contract and you like to take time off in between uh, payments, that's fine. You won't be able to get into it right away. I don't know what they're going to do for it. You can still, uh, I'm sure, sign up for a possible beta key and they will randomly choose people. Uh, but I will certainly be on it the day it comes out and be playing it like crazy, trying to show everybody what is up. So when it comes out, you can look forward to seeing quite a bit of video on this channel. Thank you for watching, guys. Please be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I do appreciate the support, and I will hopefully see you in more WoW videos very soon.